You know, art is often born from tragedy. From great pain can come great art. You see this with artists who suffer from severe depression, and art by artists, I mean singers, songwriters, and yes, of course, painters. And that happened right here in the Twin Cities. The murder of George Floyd hit many people hard, hit most of us hard. It was a challenging time for so many of us. But one local 16-year-old turned his pain into art. Joining us now is that 16-year-old, Ty Taylor, and a former teacher of his who helped him express these feelings in a beautiful way, Emmy Shanley. Ty and Emmy, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having us. So I want you to share your story with us. Ty, I know that you are a, a young biracial man and hit very hard by the murder of George Floyd. Describe what you were feeling in the days prior and then the events that transpired for you. Um, well, right as it, when it first started, when the, when the murder happened, I was scared and kind of like don't didn't know what to do. Um, I was scared to leave my house for a couple of days and... Eventually, I just was like, I turned turned that into smart. Give us a little more with that. You were scared to leave your house because you're a biracial young man. So are you an artist by trade or was art new to you? Um, I've been doing art for a while. Um, I started okay. probably in like fourth grade and now I'm going to my junior year. So it's been, it's been something part of my life for a while. It's helped me cope through a lot of things. What and, kind of art do you paint? Uh, I do... Uh, um, graphic design. Okay. Emmy, I know that when Ty was suffering after the murder of George Floyd, he reached out to you. You are a former teacher of his from Groves Academy. So describe those conversations when he reached out to you. Yeah. So Ty and I have stayed in touch. I was his teacher seven years ago. Uh, he was in my fourth grade class and we have stayed in touch since then. Um, close friends with his family. And uh, shortly after the murder of George Floyd, we got in touch with each other since both of us use art kind of as our outlet and as therapy in a way. And so we knew we kind of wanted to do something just to to figure out how to cope with our uh, with our feelings and all that. <clears throat> and so we decided we would be creating some prints and then we would be selling those prints and putting the proceeds towards um, the greater good in Minneapolis and kind of put in put out some good into the world when there was some negative, some negative things going on. Mm-hmm. Emmy, this this is Paul and and Ty. Way in here too. You're uh, donating nearly three thousand dollars to Juxtaposition Arts. Tell us more about what's going on with Juxtaposition Arts in Minneapolis. Um, I think yeah, we kind of we kind of chose that place because it's it's like helping young um, youth getting into art and like perform their art and like get it out there and distribute it. And that's kind of what we did to help them. So I, I, it was like a good idea to like put the proceeds to the, their, their organization. And juxtaposition is so great because it's youth-led. And so it's it's a really great place for kids to go and for kids who maybe don't really know what else they can be doing after school. It gives them a really constructive place to go. Um, and they have all different avenues of art. So if you're interested in graphic design, they have a place for you. If you're interested in textiles, they have people who can help you create T-shirts and that kind of thing. Um, and so we felt that it was a really important organization to support as- during this time especially. Art and creation is often used as therapy uh, in many aspects of people's lives. Ty, describe to us how you feel when you are creating. Um. Well, I feel more like happy, I guess. That's kind of sounds kind of cheesy, but it's just a way to um, like cope with feelings. And um, when I do art, I kind of forget about what's going on. And it's something I can just like focus on. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, that that makes a lot of sense. Emmy, what advice would you have for other people out there listening, of all ages, who who are struggling, who may have been traumatized by? the death of George Floyd. I mean, what, what advice would you have for them? I think all of us sort of felt like hopeless and, and a bit directionless uh, after George Floyd's murder. And so I guess my advice would just to be to find an avenue where you feel like you can um, get your emotions out because it's not healthy to bottle those up. So if it's talking to somebody, whether it's someone in your family or a mental health professional, or if it's um, finding an outlet like art or something along those lines that helps you kind of process your feelings. I think that that's really important, um, especially now. So that would be my advice, which is to be 
not bottle up your emotions and make sure that you are speaking with people that you love and people that love you. Yeah. Ty Taylor and Emmy Shanley, we want to thank you so much for sharing your experience. I think you're speaking to a lot of people who who didn't know what to do with this pent-up energy, with the sadness and the pain that they felt, and um, what a productive way um, that you have dealt with the pain. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Of course. You got it. Thank you. And, Jor, I, I, look, I've, I've had some experiences over the years at Groves Academy. They they just do such a marvelous job, the, mm-hmm. uh, the teachers, the staff, the students, and so I'm not surprised that somebody like an Emmy Shanley would step up <laughs> and try to help come up with creative outlets for, for the trauma uh, that many young people and old people, older mm-hmm. people, are, are experiencing right now in in the wake of George Floyd's death. But uh, nice to hear that story. 